This is a homemade kerosene heater. Uh, what it started out to be uh, was I discovered a way to burn kerosene and waste vegetable oil and a mixture in a rocket stove that is big enough to set a container in. And so uh, this uh, is eight inches wide. This is aluminum. Uh, and it's uh, the bottom of a fire extinguisher that happened to be disregarded. And I dug it out and I cut the bottom off and it's almost a quarter inch thick. And then I cut a sheet of uh, eight inch aluminum and made the top of it here. And then uh, I'm gonna be bringing it in for a close up here shortly. And then uh, I brought me a replacement wick for I think $11. And uh, I got my wick in here and uh, Then I went ahead and put a valve on it and I turned it into a full blown kerosene heater and said I'm not going to stick with this one in the rock stove. And so I put the chimney on it, uh, which is kind of like a rocket stove because it's a uh, draft pulling it up in here, catching all the soot. And then I've got some holes here along the side. Uh, this is another fire extinguisher. That's a, uh, about a four and a half inch fire extinguisher there. So that's two pieces of there's two pieces of fire extinguisher there. Uh, this valve has been put on here to be able to tilt it back, as so, and then take this piece, which we on here as a funnel, right? Well, I said, there you go. And then turn the valve, and you can fill it up, shut the valve, take the funnel off, tilt your chimney back. Okay, so I put a hinge back here, a piece of a strap hinge, and I also got a little door here on the front, and that's how I'm getting in there to, to light that. And what I did is I took a small replacement wick uh, from a big box door, and I cut it in half so I could have two of them. And because I knew that a big one, uh, a small, even for the smallest, like for almost like a 20,000 BTU uh, kerosene heater, so I figured if I cut that in half, there would be plenty of wick for me, which turned out to be plenty of wick for me. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fire this thing up, and I want you to see how quickly it gets hot, um, how much heat it puts off, and then I'll bring you in for a little close-up and kind of show you some how it's made. So I'm going to open the little door here. I don't have a cigarette lighter on me, so I'm going to... So you'll know what the temperature is here in this room. I'm going to shoot the stool here and show you that it's uh, 73 degrees, all right? Okay. I'm going to go ahead and shut my door. Now, I stuck this on here and I went all the way down until it was touching my pipe and I picked it up just about three quarters of an inch and then put some screws in it to, off to the sides here. Um, it heats up pretty quickly, it puts off quite a bit of heat. And, uh, you know, it's not as much heat as a, as a big uh, kerosene heater, but I didn't want it to be a big kerosene heater. This is small enough. In fact, this is just 21 inches tall here. So it's 21 inches tall, 8 inches wide. I don't know how many BTUs it's putting off. I, I just made it to be a low burn, uh, maybe a room heater, maybe a tent heater, maybe a, you know, not to chill off of a shed or something. Uh, I can get a gallon in there. There's no telling how long a gallon's going to burn this thing. I haven't done any times yet. Uh, but I will be doing times. I'm going to go ahead and grab it. While it's warming up, I'm, uh, I'm going to go ahead and grab the camera and bring you in for some detailed looks. So you can see that the little door there is on a little hinge. I'm going to open that up. You can see the fire going in there on the wick. I'm going to go ahead and tilt this back. I'm sorry. So there it is with the uh, with the chimney sw swoped back there, and you can see that I've got a couple pieces of aluminum sandwiching that wick up together in there. All right, not a bad little flame. Going to go ahead and tilt it back up. Shut the door right there. 
So there's the door. And that's just a piece of copper and the valve there. And I want to show you the strap hinge that's in the back. So there's the strap hinge that's in the back. It's just pop riveted down and then pop riveted into that. And the uh, the eighth inch is just screwed down on top. It's, that's a quarter inch thick, so it was plenty of room for me to get a uh, uh, a screw into it. So I'm going to set this back up here and then I'm going to uh, show you a temperature reading or two. Okay. And that's only been burning since you've seen it, you've seen it lit up. So I'm going to go ahead and get a temperature reading here right there at the center top of the, earth, top of the uh, top of the paint can. And I hope you can see that that's already 219 degrees. Yep. And uh, the little stack underneath here is running right now at about 115. And uh, it works pretty good. I'm, uh, I'm fairly happy. I guess I'll be having to build, have to build another one that will go inside the, uh, the big 12 inch rocking stove so he can get a 10, 12 hour burn. Uh, this one, I just went kind of crazy and went on. And, uh, Made it a complete little kerosene heater. That's just a paint can that I cut and put it on top there. And so I've got some holes here to let the, let the heat out. And uh, hopefully it will keep, I don't smell any fumes, so I'm not going to be using it in, a, in the closed area anyway, probably. Uh, there's no, no noticeable fumes at all. And it's not sooty, and any soot should be caught in the can. Any unburned gas. So anyway, uh, that's my home-built kerosene heater. Right. Thanks for watching, guys.